Postal here. So today we're taking out the J21RB. Uh, this is a tier 8 Swedish slash European multi-role fighter. Um, and yeah, so why do, am I flying this? Well, you may have noticed this is the first time I've actually posted a video on this particular plane. Uh, that's because I just purchased it. So Wargaming right now, World of Warplanes has a um, premium plane discount shenanigans going on. Oh, Happy New Year, by the way. Figure I'm going to start using some fireworks for today, at least, anyway. Since we're uh, pushing on New Year's. Um, anyway, so Tier 8 planes, uh, premium planes, you can get it 15% off. Uh, I am all about discounts, so take advantage of what you can. Tier 5 and below, you actually get 50% off. And Tier 6 and 7, I think you get 30% off. Uh, now, unfortunately, it's just for gold. Uh, this is, does not apply to uh, premium plans in the premium shop. Uh, basically meaning no premium um, for cash. Uh, it looks like we need to... Can we get this? I don't want to use my rockets if I don't have to. Good, good. We want to use the rockets on that military base, so let's go ahead and do that. More fireworks. Try to keep putting fireworks every time I uh, actually see them. Uh, or, you know, see that I have the ability to do that. Um, and let's keep on keeping on here. So, yeah, if, if you are wanting to get a premium plane, now's the time to do it. This is a really, really good premium plane. It's got a lot of good things going for it. First and foremost is, well, I mean, it, it is... Um, it is European, meaning... Oh, cool. Well, I didn't even need to use my rockets. Um, it can be used for any nation. You can pay 200,000 credits, and you can use this for the Americans, if you want, or for the Japanese. Germans, British, Soviet, it doesn't matter. Um, and so there's a lot of flexibility on a European plane that there might not necessarily be with some other planes. So even if this wasn't a, a good tier 8 premium plane, it might be just worth it just because of that kind of flexibility. But it is a good tier 8 premium plane beyond the fact that it is um, European with flexibility. Yes, it's a multi-role, so it's definitely got some shortcomings. Um, first and foremost is definitely going to be its altitude performance. It's middling when it comes to airspeed, at least out of the box. Dang it, I was hoping to uh, bomb trap him. Um, and yeah, I guess that's about it. The, the guns are kind of weak. It has one 20 millimeter cannon, which you really need um, to hit to be of any use when it comes to high health targets, like that um, ground attack plane that we just took care of. Uh, it can be a real pain sometimes when you're trying to chase down a heavy fighter. And let's see here. We're going to win this pretty handily, I think, if we continue to own this, uh, this uh, military base, which it seems like we're going to. So what the, the four 50 cal machine guns are good at is going against multi-rolls like that. And fighters, um, very, very good at taking out fighters. Especially a combination of the 20 mil cannon uh, with those 50 cal machine guns. Let's see if we can take out this JU-288A. Uh, might not be the smartest thing to do, just because going up high in any multi-roll, well, most multi-rolls, I should say, I don't know. Um, can be a recipe for disaster. Just because you get yourself caught up. This plane's, look, I'm at 8,000 feet, I'm in the red. This plane's bread and butter is its maneuverability, something I haven't talked about yet. Um, it's very, very maneuverable, especially for a multi-roll, but I've actually outmaneuvered a handful of um, fighters. Um, crap. Not the fighter that's going to be behind me. Clearly, you need to be, you know, not caught out by a um, fighter to be able to take advantage of uh, outmaneuvering him. 
I can. Well, I'm not sure I can outmaneuver him. I've outmaneuvered LA sevens. Heck, I've outmaneuvered um, MEP 1092s. So a specialized one of that. Granted, you don't know what they're specialized for. It could have been specialized for speed or something like that. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Can I get my shots on target here? Stay on target. So anyway, my point is, it has a lot of flexibility as far as maneuverability is concerned. I've gone ahead and kind of maximized uh, the maneuverability, at least as much as you can, out of the box. Um, the equipment I've set for maneuverability, because I figure at this point, without specialization, I can't really... What? Seriously? Can't really do a whole lot when it comes to airspeed. Go get some revenge there. Still got like 11 seconds before I can even do anything here. Okay, this will be quick. Somebody's behind me. I don't like it. Oh, it's me. Dang it, too much going on, I'm dead. Yep. Well, we need to get the uh, the military base as quickly as possible. What is our um, command center going for? Yeah, shoot. And I've got to spawn way the heck over here, dang it. It's bad time of dying, huh? Bad timing, not that there's ever really good timing on dying. That's definitely bad timing on dying. Uh, let's see what we can do here. We got a lot of support from Rooster, it looks like. Well, enough support, I suppose. Oh man, they're definitely going to be taking over our command center. Oh good, we got the military base. So, can I don't have... So this, this plane doesn't have the flexibility to go get bombers. It's one of the downfalls of most multi-rolls. Um, unless it's a Soviet bomber, then in that kind of situation... Um, you know, obviously the Soviet bombers are going to be... A little lower on the altitude bracket. Let's see what we can do here to take over the center. Give us some flexibility on actually winning this battle. I'd like to win the battle, it'd be nice. Come on. Thank you. Danka. I didn't realize they've got two turn fighters, so that's going to make things a uh, pain in the butt. Luckily this one's Japanese, so it's on fire just by looking at it weird. Um, go ahead and get his J-21 knocked out if we can. Should be able to. Oh, fireworks. Where'd the fireworks go? They're over there. Get this LA knocked out now. Get our boost on. Engaging Das Boostin. Oh, there's game. So, I mean, pretty pretty decent overall game, right? Um, this is actually one of the first battles I've had that, that hasn't been um, extreme one way or the other. I've had a lot of, um, a lot of stomps. Let's head back. So not a lot of air to ground damage there. Actually, one of the, my least air to ground damage games um, seemed to be when I did want to use it, it was uh, the wrong time to use it. Uh, but a decent amount, uh, 14 um, above average, I'd say, on the um, aerial targets knocked out, at least above average for the games I've had so far. Um, and we had Zimwell on the team. I didn't realize that, so no wonder we did, uh, did well. It's always good to have him supporting, or definitely better to have him on the same team rather than against us. Um, and that uh, Lemmy Winks did really well on the enemy team. So, you know, is the is the J twenty one RB a good plane? Yeah, actually, it is. Um, I would even go so far as to recommending it as a tier eight premium if that's what you're going out of your way to get. Um, and a couple of reasons for that. A, it is a good plane. Is it the best tier 8 premium plane? Like, you know, apples to apples? 
pro well I can't say because I've only flown this a handful of times and I just can't tell you if it is or not it's a really solid plane I don't know if it's the best cherry premium plane what it is though is flexible um, flexible in game because you it's a European plane so you can make it any any nation that you want um, also flexible in the battle because it's a multi-role and you've got the ability to do ground damage and you've got the ability to do air-to-air -air damage as you saw there um, and so you know if you're going if you're thinking about getting a tier 8 premium plane this is certainly a good one to get especially right now with the discounts and especially with its uh, you know flexibility of usage I've uh, like I said stated uh, in the game I've set mine up for maneuverability for right now reason being is it's not specialized it's not even close to being specialized and as such there's only so much airspeed you can get out of it I figure I might as well you know kind of go all in with maneuverability um, and that way I've got the ability to um, to have some sort of um, flexibility in the game I have put the um, aerodynamic pylons here to help with the um, the airspeed a little bit um, it helps with the aerodynamics. One thing I didn't really get a chance to talk about is it's a 60 second base reload time for these rockets. And yeah, well, that helps 16,000 uh, cumulative damage. That's good to know. So adding to the, um, the reload time is not a big deal. I added three seconds to get more airspeed. And to me, 63 second reload time is nothing really, to be honest. I'm so used to 120 minimum uh, that 60 seconds is like, I'm a happy camper. Um, yeah, and so I'm not going to typically have the fireworks on here, but, ha you know, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, we, we deserve a Happy New Year for sure. I know, uh, you know, changing the day or changing the year is not going to change um, everything that's happened this year. It's not going to change, um, you know, things that need to be changed. But it is nice just to kind of get a refresh and say, well, you know what, it's not 2020 anymore. It's going to be 2021, so... I hope you all have a great uh, new year for sure. We'll be staying up late tonight with the kids, see if we uh, what we can do. Uh, but you know, I think we all deserve a happy new year. So happy new year to all of you. I uh, hope you all take advantage. If you want to take advantage of the premium discounts that are going on, the easiest way to find out uh, the discounts of the plane, the price of the plane that you want, is you can go to the specials, go to the winter trials here, and it'll give you straight up what the cost of everything was here um, as far as tier 8 premiums is concerned you know I'm not gonna get a China me personally I'm not gonna get a Chinese plane just because I'm using my premiums to to boost up pilots um, as well as earn silver and the Chinese planes don't have any non premium versions so it doesn't really seem overly um, useful to me but there's a lot of good Chinese planes IL-10M a lot of people like um, and then there's not that you can purchase it, but there's like the JL. Um, let's see what else could I have gotten. J and M. Uh, I don't see any point in getting a J and M since I have a Horton. Uh, oh, the dough! I didn't even see the dough, oh, but I've got the uh, plane. But so, you know, there's there's some good tier eight premium planes that are available. Um, that will just show you what you have available to purchase. Other planes that are available are going to be like the XP-58 and the P-80A, my two most flown uh, planes in the game, not just premium, but just most flown in the game. A-26B is an excellent tier 6 premium plane. Um, XP-55, I, you can't purchase, I don't believe. You can only earn. Um, as far as tier 5 and below, remember these are like super going to be super cheap. Tier 5 is going to be about 1,000 gold. Uh, actually, it should be less than that, like 800 and some change to 1,000. And then as you get lower and lower, it's going to be even cheaper and cheaper. Um, XFL1 is a pretty darn good plane. It's basically a P39 at Tier 5. Um, speaking of P39, P39Q is a great plane. I-280, I don't know. I just got that, so I don't know if it's any good. Um, Lag 3-4, I mean, I guess it could be good. I don't know. It's only 575 gold, so again, now might be the time to get this tier 4. I'm not necessarily saying anybody should spend anything if they don't want to, but if you do want to, now is going to be the time to earn these planes, to get these planes. LA-9RD is actually a very good... Uh, well, I can't say very good. Every time I ran into it, it's been a very good plane to um, have on my team. Very difficult plane to 
um, go against. T1, I don't know. Again, I think it's just showing it. I don't know if it's available in game or not. This would be a plane I recommend getting if you want. Uh, if you like heavy planes, T1 is an excellent plane for sure. Uh, quick, quick, quick! Postal, get over with this. Uh, 109 TL. I, mean, I, it's okay. It's not. It's not the best. Um, if I was gonna get a tier eight premium uh, multi roll, I'd get the J21 first and foremost. Um, the Spitfire VB VDB605 is one of the most powerful tier six fighters in the game. Um, it's basically a Spitfire that can go higher. There is, there's no downside to the Spitfire 5 DB605 other than it's German if you wanted a British plane. But it's a Spitfire 5 that can go as high as a BF-109. Can't go as fast as a BF-109, but it can go that high. The ME-209 is not... Uh, uh, it's a very, very fast Tier 5 plane, but other than that, it's... it's eh. um, and the FW-190A8, if you like FW-190s, it's a good plane. If you don't, then it's not. <laughs> The Doe 335 is actually more played like a fast multi-role plane um, that can actually go up high. Um, so the bombs and rockets, if I remember correctly, reload pretty quickly. It's got one pretty tough cannon on the front of it and then some, some um, support guns. Uh, BF 110C6 is overpowered tier four heavy plane. Uh, it's got a super crazy sniper cannon on it. If you don't like sniper cannons though, it could be a very frustrating plane. It's very, very unmaneuverable. Uh, but it's a lot of fun if you're down for that. I can't speak to any of those. I can't even speak to the Doe 17. I think I've flown it once or twice if I won it. Uh, Japanese plane, so the Ki 94 Tier 7 is a very good plane. I haven't flown it, but I've heard nothing but good things about it, and I trust the people that have told me that it's a good uh, heavy plane. The J4M I bought, it was one of the first premium planes I actually bought with my own money. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. I mean, it's okay for what it is, but I don't fly it very often anymore. The J8M, uh, almost nobody, so how do I put this? You've got to be a special kind of masochist to like the J8M. Uh, that's not true. Um, it is two 30 millimeter cannons. It goes pretty darn fast, especially when you're using the rocket boost. It goes very, very high. But otherwise, it's not really a fighter. It's more of a heavy fighter assassin. Um, it cannot maneuver. It can go very, very fast. Uh, but if it gets its engine knocked out, or if it gets set on fire, because it is Japanese, it's in a lot of trouble. So you play this plane like a heavy fighter, and you just kind of deal with the fact that it only has two 30 millimeter cannons, and if you're okay with that, then maybe you'll like it. I wouldn't mind having this plane, but I'm definitely not going to go out of my way to get this plane... Uh, just because I've got enough planes that have two 30 millimeter cannons and I know how frustrating that can be I know how good it can be, but I know how frustrating it can be and I wanted a fun plane That's why I got the J21 today Key 88 is an excellent plane. It's basically a Japanese P38 uh, P38 P39 um, It's a lot of fun. It's not maneuverable like the other Japanese planes But it's uh, pretty hard-hitting as far as the cannons are concerned. It's got decent airspeed and altitude performance uh, the A6M3 Experimental is an excellent um, zero. Um, the only reason I bought the A6M2 was because I got special paint for it. Otherwise, the A6M3 is going to be an A6M2 with better guns. Uh, it's got 30 millimeter cannons, if I remember correctly, and some 20. Yeah, it's got 30 millimeter cannons and it's got 30 cal machine guns. So it's like two extremes: very, very weak machine guns, very, very strong cannons. But it's at tier five. Um, so it's otherworldly. Um, UK, let's see. So Seafang, eh. Um, eh. It used to be really quite good, uh, but it's it's been, if you're going to get a tier 8 multi-role, you might as well just get the J8. I mean, the J21, I mean. The Meteor I don't own, and it's never necessarily been a scary plane to go against, but it is a tier 7 jet. There's not a lot of those in the game, so it's very fast for tier 7. It gets out um, classed once it's stuck in a tier eight battle, typically. Um, but it's, you know, overall solid plane. Um, it's very, very low on the maneuver on the um, excuse me altitude performance. I haven't noticed that before. Um, but one thing it's got going for it is its guns are all centralized. Mustang One A is basically, if if I'm remembering correctly, is basically a P fifty one with um, twenty millimeter Hispano cannons. So, I mean, that might be pretty good. It does look like it's kind of slow for a Mustang, but who knows. 
Uh, Boomerang is just basically a premium version of a Spitfire, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's up to you. Uh, I think this has 20 millimeter cannons. Yeah, 220 mils and four Browning. So it's actually got quite a lot of gun power. Um, I like my Boomerang, but I don't fly it all that often. And the Phantom is you know, just a very, very maneuverable um, plane at tier four. I don't play tier four a lot. I, I won this plane way back in the day. It's fun for what it is, but it's very, very slow. Even for tier four, it's very, very slow. Um, we're away, uh, you know, it's a ground attack plane at tier three. It's actually not too bad for tier three. Um, oh no, is it tier three? Yeah, tier three. Um, I've flown it a few times. It's like a giant boomerang. If you look at the boomerang, the wear away is kind of the same thing, but bigger and very much, 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 much less maneuverable with bombs. And then the Blenheim uh, bomber, you see these from time to time. Uh, they tend to fly way too high, but I mean, you can do that at tier three and get away with it. And they tend to be a pain in the butt, but I can't imagine it being very um, fun gameplay. Chinese planes I mentioned before, I wouldn't recommend any of them just because, or I should say this, I wouldn't buy any of them because they're Chinese and all they're going to do is earn silver and build up pilots that can't be used anywhere else. If I want to buy, get silver, I'm going to buy another plane that I can actually utilize to build pilots as well. But that's me. They're very, very similar to their tech tree counterparts. The Mosquito 26 is basically a Mosquito. Um, if I remember correctly, it is a Mosquito. There, there's going to be some slight, slight differences. But if you like the Mosquito, maybe you'll like the Mosquito 26. P-51K is basically just a P-51D. I don't think there's any differences between these two. Um, other than this one being premium. The IL-10M actually does have quite a few differences, if I remember correctly. It's it's a tier 8 IL-10, so it's actually quite maneuverable for a, um, a Soviet ground attack plane. Um, a lot of people that have this really like it. So I do some research on the IL-10M. A lot of people, like I said, they, they really like the IL-10M at tier 8. Um, and I know it, it definitely makes a lot of silver. And as far as the European lines are concerned, so these are going to be the flexible ones. These are going to be the ones that allow you to put the plane in any other nation. For instance, I have the NC-1070. I quite like this plane now that I know how to play GAs. I've made mine a German ground attack plane because it plays very similarly to the German planes. Um, and so now it is building up my ME-329 pilot. VB-10, I was lucky enough to have uh, somebody purchase this for me. Thank you so much again. And um, I've made it a Japanese plane at this point. Um, it is building up my Key 93 pilot. SE 100. Um, and by the way, these are all great planes. Um, in fact, the only one of these planes that might not be great, and I mean like straight up great, is going to be the A10, 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 AD 10C2 and the BK 534. But I'll get to those in a second. Um, so SE 100 might be one of the strongest tier five fighter heavy fighters, just straight up. Um, really good frontal cannons, really good rear cannon. Um, very very unmaneuverable, but um, I've made mine British. P 38. I don't own this plane, but everybody that has it says it's ridiculously good, and I believe everybody, because literally nobody's told me it's a bad plane. Polish plane P 38. Uh, J 21. We just went over S 199. I have on my European account. It is a great, great multi-role. Really, really flexible. Um, it's basically a BF-109G down-tiered with slightly weaker guns, but slightly better guns. I don't know how to put that. Um, and then you've got four really weak bombs, but they're, it's nice to have bombs to be able to just kind of help flip a sector when you need to. AD-10C2, I just said, was not a great plane. I really, really like this plane. It's one of my favorite planes in the game. But overall, it's kind of a weak, um, a weak plane. It has a rear um, turret on it, which is really fun. Um, the guns are kind of weak. It's a maneuverable plane, but not quite maneuverable enough to stick with things like a Spitfire or, um, you know, Zeros definitely not Yaks things like that. Um, but it's supposed to be a maneuverable plane. The thing it's got going for it is the the turret kind of helps keep people off your butt. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty slow, and it's got very, very, very low altitude performance. BK-534, I have this, or something very, very similar at, um, I think it was something that we were able to win. I'm sure you guys remember this, right? 
yeah. Oh, I've got the B534. Uh, the differences would be something, who knows. Um, oh, this has four um, 30 cal machine guns, whereas the one that you can purchase has two 30 cal machine guns and a 20 millimeter cannon. So this one might actually be a little bit stronger just because it's got that, that hefty 20 mil cannon at three, tier three, which is pretty crazy. Um, but either way, the airframe itself is kind of maneuverable, but not overly maneuverable. I mean, it's it's tier three, so everything's kind of maneuverable down here. But um, I just like Czechoslovakian, and I like seeing like different nations in the game. I always like to check. I like to check tanks. Um, I like to check planes. Um, yeah. So I know I just kind of went off on the tech tree there. Let's head back to the J twenty one. This plane is a really good plane, especially if you like multi rolls. Especially if you're okay with the lack of altitude performance. If you're okay with with kind of middling maneuverability and airspeed, yeah, it's got great maneuverability for a multi roll, but it's still not gonna like save you from a Yak 15 or a lot of the other um, fighters in the game. The airspeed's kind of eh if you're trying to catch up to like 262s and stuff. So again, it's it's standard multi roll stuff if you're down for that kind of um, process. Really like the the reload on the rockets. So anyway, I'm done rambling. I know I rambled. I would have read like 20 minutes in or something stupid like that. I'm just going to reiterate. Hope you guys, you know, have safe and a happy new year. Um, heck, some of you that might be watching this in, um, in EU, might, it might already be a new year for all I know. <laughs> anyway, I will see you out on the battlefield. I'll still be streaming um, Saturday night going into Sunday morning. We'll see what I actually do on New Year's as well. We'll see. I might have the ability to do some streaming on Twitch. But otherwise, have what am I doing? <laughs> I'm trying to disconnect before it's even time. Otherwise, uh, have yourself a great day, and bye.